Let's talk about multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000. There's some cool number patterns that happen with each of these. So let's start here with something like 4 times 10, one that maybe we're comfortable with or already know. 4 times 10 would be the same as saying 4 tens. 4 tens. And 4 tens, one way we could represent that is a 10 plus a second 10, plus a third 10, plus a fourth 10, or four tens. And now let's count that. 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 10 is 30, plus 10 is 40. So our solution is 40, or a four with a zero. And this is the pattern that we've seen before when we multiply 4 times 10, we keep our whole number of 4, and we add a 0 to the end for the times 10. So another example of that might be something like 8 times 10. Well, 8 times 10 is the same as 8 tens. And this time, let's just count them. If we count 8 tens, it'll be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So when I counted 8 tens, the solution was 80, or an 8 with a 0 on the end. So times 10, when we multiply a whole number times 10, the pattern is that we end up adding a 0 to the end of our whole number. So let's take now what we already know about tens and let's apply it to hundreds. Something like, let's say, 2 times 100. There's a couple ways we can think about this. One way is to say that this is the same as two hundreds. Two hundreds, which is 100 plus another hundred. There is quite literally two hundreds, which is a total of two hundred, or two with two zeros on the end. Now we have two zeros on the end. Or another way to think about this is two, two times 100, instead of saying times 100, we could say times 10 times 10, because 10 times 10 is the same as 100. And two times 10, we know is a two with a zero on the end, which is 20, and 20 times 10 then will be 20 with a zero on the end. Because we multiplied by 10 twice, we added two zeros. And multiplying by 100 is just that. It's exactly that. It's multiplying by 10 twice. So if times 10 adds one zero, then times 100, or times 10 twice, adds two zeros to our answer. And we can go even further and think about thousands. Let's try something like 9 times 1,000. Well, we could think of this as 9 thousands, and if we have 9 thousands, then we have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, that was 5, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. So when I counted 1,000 nine times, our solution was 9,000. Or looking at the numbers, a 9, our original whole number, with three zeros after it. So nine times a thousand is nine thousand, or nine with three zeros. And we can go back to what we did before, thinking about this in terms of tens. We've worked out why multiplying by ten adds a zero. So let's think about one thousand in terms of tens. One thousand is equal to ten times ten times ten. 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 tens is 1,000. So instead of 1,000, we can write 10 times 10 times 10. These are equivalent. And so when we multiply a number times 10, we add a 0. But here we're multiplying by 3 tens, so we add 3 zeros. So let's look at that all as one pattern. Let's say something, let's take 7, the number 7, 
and let's multiply it by 10, by 100, and by 1,000, and see what happens. 7 times 10 is going to be 7 with 1 zero, because we have 110. 7 times 100 will be 7 with two zeros, because again, 100 is the same as 10 times 10. So this is 7 times 10 twice, so we have two zeros. And 7 times 1,000 will be 7,000, or 7 with three zeros, because 1,000 is equal to 10 times 10 times 10, or three tens. So we add one, two, three zeros. And so we can see the pattern here when we multiply by 10, which has one zero, we add one zero to the end of our whole number. When we multiply a whole number times 100, which has two zeros, we add two zeros for hundreds. And for thousands, when we multiply by 1,000, we'll add three zeros to the end of a whole number.